Once again, the warmest of greetings, everyone. My name is Lindsay Woodside, Acting Director of Programs and Services with the organization and your host for the conference. Uh, Robert, I will pass it over, uh, the virtual airway rather, over to you for an introduction. Uh, thank you, Lindsay. I'm uh, Robert Luke, CEO of uh, eCampus Ontario. And for the purpose of today's outro, the uh, official laugh track for uh, Lindsay's stand-up comedy routine. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. Over the last week, we have been engaged in rich and meaningful dialogue. We have been challenged to do better, to further deepen our thinking and stimulate our sector's work in creating a strong digital learning infrastructure for the future of Ontario's learners. In her welcome message at Monday's kickoff, Anne-Marie Vaughan, board co-chair at eCampus Ontario, wished us an inspiring, thought-provoking, and engaging conference. I've spoken to many of you throughout the week, and those well wishes were certainly realized. Minister Dunlop's welcoming remarks reminded us that we are collaborative partners in the government's vision for virtual learning in Ontario, and that partnership is deeply appreciated in helping to bring the strategy to life. As we close out today, I want to share some key conference insights and takeaways with you through your voice, the sector's voice, who have willingly and graciously agreed to let me share. And to accompany your feedback, I've included a few comments from my colleagues at eCampus Ontario as well. Dr. Alon Paulson, a teaching and learning consultant at Conestoga College Institute says, quote, test 2021 has given students, educators, administrators, institutions, and partners a flexible four-day opportunity to reflect and share together. In a time filled with change and challenges, TESS remains a trusted space in which learners come first. This focus remains key if we are going to provide them with culturally responsive, barrier-free, and technology supported education to achieve their goals, end quote. Hailing from the University of Guelph, working as a faculty member in the Department of Molecular and Cellular Biology, Dr. Charlotte de Ajaro shared with me the following, and I quote, it was inspiring to hear at tests during a year with many unforeseen circumstances, how educators throughout Ontario have been able to guide their students through different supports, building a future where both learners and instructors are shaping their education experience. As an Ontario Extend facilitator, it has been a privilege to be a part of so many educators' journeys, celebrating the milestones from the badges to the aha moments of incorporating technology to create a more inclusive learning environment." End quote. As a first time test attendee, Don Elridge, Digital Learning Associate at eCampus Ontario, proclaimed, it has been a great week and I have thoroughly enjoyed my first experience with tests. Dr. Irvin, Dr. Irvin's keynote had lots of great insights, but what, what resonated with me was the importance of using digital technologies to promote access for all learners. Educators need to intentionally design multiple means of access so that learners can engage in a way that works for them, end quote. I received a thoughtful, unsolicited email after Monday's learner panel from Dr. Radhika Bissendial, a professor at, in Fanshawe's College Health Systems Management and School of Information Technology. Radhika said, the TESS 2021 learner panel was outstanding. The platform of hosting four students who lived through and continue to experience higher education pivoting during the pandemic and online learning was authentic. The group shared their experiences, positives and negatives. This group of panelists provided educators recommendations for future consideration as the sector moves forward following the recent pandemic. As an educator, it was humbling to hear the experiences. The conversation also served as motivation through shared ideas from the panelists 
of what the future of our education system should consider, end quote. It's a heartwarming, uh, sorry, it's heartwarming, Radhika, rather, that this panel resonated so deeply with you. Emma Gooch, program manager at eCampus Ontario, commented that her favorite test moment was the session she attended focused on hybrid futures for tomorrow's learners. She said, future focused work is so critical to our sector and I found it so insightful. Test session presenter, Dorina Grosu, a professor in the School of Workforce Development, Continuing Education and Online Learning at Conestoga College, shared with me that learning by using the latest technologies and tools available has proven to enlarge the access to education for a large number of people who otherwise would have, would have been able to engage directly. The openness approach of sharing reinforces our human values like collaboration, learning, sharing knowledges, sharing knowledge and experiences. One of our program coordinators at eCampus Ontario, Sandra Yanacek, commented that, quote, Dr. ABC's keynote was the highlight. His passion and enthusiasm for EDI as a relationship and not a performance was incredibly powerful. Rama Kaba Deniman, program lead at eCampus Ontario, also greatly appreciated this same keynote. She commented, Dr. Andrew Campbell's keynote also really stood out for me. His message was great and empowering, but also his delivery and the passion he had for this topic just stood out for me. He provided a lot of concrete, actionable takeaway that anyone can apply to their work and in their lives. His honesty and authenticity came through which I believe is very important whenever we talk about EDI. I just enjoyed the fact that it just wasn't another theoretical presentation about EDI, but instead he provided simple examples we can do, such as building genuine relationships with others. Bert Slesser, who works as a faculty developer in the Center for Teaching and Learning at Georgian College, shared the following sentiment with me. Test 2021 has been another fulfilling conference. Each year, I'm pleased to attend, listen, and learn. Evidently, as educators, administrators, and support staff, we have a lot of critical work ahead of us. From equity, diversity, and inclusion initiatives, to embedding evolving technologies into our curriculum and pedagogy in a sustainable way, we are not without substantial challenges. TESS is always a refreshing and consistent cornerstone in which we can take a moment to pause, reflect, and use it to sharpen our skills to better navigate our hybrid future. Finally, this key takeaway says it all, shared on Twitter by Laura Killam, a professor at Cambrian College. Laura says, Tess was so well done on Tuesday that I can't sleep because I have been thinking about equity, diversity, and inclusion issues and the need to be anti-racist in the classroom through critical reflection on language and representation. I need Wednesday off for reflection. Heart emoji. Thank you to all these individuals for allowing me to share your voices. Ecampus Ontario continues to be a connector for the province's colleges, universities, and Indigenous institutes, fueling excellence in the sector. Our commitment is to sharing best practices, resources, and guidance through the delivery of our programs, services, and platforms. Virtual, virtual innovation in education does not happen in a bubble and we're delighted to be on this journey with you. Our deepest thanks to you for making the time and finding the space in your busy lives to attend TESS 2021. Remember that each year TESS evolves and we do so with the feedback from our community. You would have received an email with a feedback survey or it's coming to a email inbox near you. 
Uh, and we would be so grateful if you could take a few minutes to complete it. We want to express our sincere gratitude and thanks to all the thought leaders who delivered keynotes, sessions, workshops, and participated in panels, and to those who contributed to the VLS showcase. And to our eCampus team, whose unrelenting drive to pull together one awesome conference always shows. To the comms team in particular, to Latvia, Jason, and Emily, and a sincere thank you to all the eCampus Ontario staff who contributed to these conference efforts. Whether you offered your moderation skills, your hosting skills, or logistical and event planning skills, we sincerely appreciate your commitment to ensuring this was an incredible event. Finally, a conference of this size would not be possible without our event partners from Redstone and from Brand Heroes, who produced our video footage. Thank you so very much. As we close out today, I'm told that Robert has a couple of questions for me. Now I am in the hot seat. So with that, Robert, I will pass it over to you. Thanks, Lindsay. I, I thought it only fitting uh, to thank you for doing such a fantastic job of being our host uh, for the week uh, from the, the great, um, I almost want to say routine that you did at the, at the uh, beginning. Um, but that almost makes it sound, well, routine, but it was such a, a great injection of humor, which I think is really important as we, you know, we deal with serious issues like equity and decolonization and diversity, but we also bring to these environments, you know, what we are as people. And I just want to say thanks a lot for, uh, for sharing that aspect of yourself, of your humanity uh, with the rest of us. Um, so yes, I'm going to ask you a few questions to reflect on uh, the week, the hashtag week of tests. And uh, why don't we just start with what was your favorite moment of TESS 2021? In their workshop, the hybrid future of experiential learning, which was, which was yesterday, yesterday afternoon, um, Al Hearn and Karine uh, Bokui discussed the effects of COVID on experiential learning. And what really resonated with me from listening to the work they had undertaken in, in this space to date was just an all around good reminder that the show must go on. So even in the face of a global pandemic and pivot to online and hybrid teaching, the educators continue to you know, march forward and provide high quality learning experiences that are flexible in their delivery, uh, participatory in their learning, and expansive in the technologies used in the tool set. I spent years working as a geography lab instructor at Wilfrid Laurier University, where experiential learning is truly learning by doing in the field through field work. Sometimes, uh, you know, that's been difficult to do recently. And so attending this session was a great reminder that everyone has been digging deep to preserve the unique elements of learning experiences, but at the same time, um, to also broaden the scope of what that looks like in this, in this new normal. Well, that's really well said, uh, Lindsay. And uh, I'm reminded of the remarks that Minister Dunlop uh, said at the beginning and saying that this virtual learning, online learning is now an essential service and how we have gone in the space of less than two years of something that was done and done very well. And there's decades of research of this uh, to support the work that we do, uh, but done by you know possibly only a subset of people on our campuses to being something that everybody had to do is I think an important realization and the challenge that we have now to go from what was emergency remote teaching to you know, really developing high quality, thoughtful, digital by design learning environments that uh, can scale and which provide our learners for learners with options. Um, so my next question is a time machine question. So the test time machine. Like I'll type in hashtag test time machine in a moment, unless somebody else wants to do that. Um, but if you could, because the theme was co-creating the future. Mm -hmm. And so let's let's time machine, let's test time machine mm -hmm. ourselves. Thank you very much, somebody. 
um, to let's go into the future, you know, five or 10 years or 50 to 100 years, whatever you like, what would you expect to find? So in other words, what are some of the, the salient observations on the future of learning that you have heard that when we're in, you know, test time machine and it's 2031 or whatever, or 2051, what will we be talking about then? Well, first of all, I imagine a future where I would have received that micro credential from Second City. <laughs> Secondly, I imagine that the show has gone on, that we as a sector have continued to evolve in the ways that we collaborate with one another, in the ways that we deliver programming to, uh, to and engage with learners, um, in the ways in which we as the post secondary sector participate in our institutions and our broader communities in the ways in which the sector undertakes research and the type of types of research it pursues. In the future, I would expect to find us engaged in continuing the hard but rewarding work of co-creating the future together, a future that celebrates and advances community and collaboration across the entire post-secondary sector, focused on embracing learners, educators, staff, and administrators' needs and perspectives. My hope is that this week, we have reinforced we have the ability not only to survive, but thrive together in the digitally designed future. Robert, over to you to offer any final remarks, as long as I'm well, in the hot seat now. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That was, that was great, Lindsay. Um, and I guess the other thing I'll say is, you know, in the test time machine, uh, the test of the future, maybe even next year, we'll have some uh, stand-up entertainment uh, by you as the, uh, you know, like the evening <laughs> entertainment uh, before we uh, before we head out uh, on the town, as it were. Um, but yeah, no, thanks a lot, and thanks to everybody who's joined us. Uh, it's been a fantastic week. Uh, our, you know, yeah. our, our focus here at eCampus Ontario is to support our members and our community to create the, the future, to co-create the future that is digital by design, as, as Lindsay said. Uh, and just to reinforce um, you know, what I said a few moments ago about digital learning being an essential service for the 21st century. And I think that I, I'm reminded here of some uh, a comment that uh, Coulter uh, made, Coulter Asinoue during his keynote made. I put this up on the Twitter because I was really struck by it. And he said that the future of education does not lie in the past, but in the future we create together. And I really thought that that was a, a super insightful and brilliant thing to say, not just exemplifying our theme about co-creating the future together, but uh, you know, coming from somebody like uh, Coulter, who, um, you know, as he said, was recently, uh, I think he talked about it as a full-time learner, but he also said that he will always be a learner throughout his, his whole life. Mm -hmm. And so I think about how we co-create the future. And I think about people like Coulter. And I think about the people that are in school today. And I think about, you know, my 14-year-old niece, for instance, who's uh, still in high school. And what does the future look like for her when she is learning and, uh, you know, working in the world in her career and continuing to learn and accessing the resources from our Indigenous institutes, from our colleges and, and from our universities. Um, so I, I guess I'll just conclude by thanking everybody for coming, uh, for, uh, for attending the week of tests. Uh, we did switch it up a little bit in our format this week to provide uh, folks with more options to attend, and hopefully that was useful. Um, but you've been uh, sent the link, and uh, Lutfia put it up in the chat there as well. Thank you, Lutfia, uh, to um, uh, give us some feedback on our survey. So please do. Uh, we read those results um, with relish every year. Uh, because we're we're here to support and serve you, our community, and we want to know what worked well, what didn't work, and and what might we do to improve, and what might we do more of for you, uh, as we convene uh, in the future. Um, this really, after all, is part of how we create the future of tests with you. Um, so, with that, uh, Lindsay, back to you. Perfect. Thanks, Robert. So, I guess that this is us signing off until next year, until we meet again. Uh, thank you so much once again. Take care, everyone. Have a lovely weekend. Thanks, everybody.